On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, the team travels to Honduras to investigate a fortress attacked by pirates of the Caribbean. See, that's ghost hunting weather. Are you a parrot still in hiding? Are you guarding your treasure? In the isolation chamber, Rob and Susan encounter an evil entity. I just heard something. I heard it. it Sound like footsteps. Is there something lurking within these walls? Dear God. What's that? What was that? That came from right here. Has the team gone too far in provoking the spirits? You gonna play games now? That's good. I like games. Walk your ass over here. I'm getting chest pains. Obviously a drop-dead gorgeous country. To start our trip, we're going to be doing a little zip lining today. I can't think of a better way to see the country. Um, I'm not, I'm not good with heights. That's a fair I don't want to get over. <laughs> How about you, Susie? You ready to go today? Hell yeah, I am. That's what's up. Ooh. A little off-roading to boot. <laughs> So we just arrived here in Honduras, and before we actually get to the investigation, I thought it'd be nice for everyone to get out and uh, do a nice zipline tour of the jungles here. Some of the members of the team a little apprehensive about it. I'm a little nervous, because uh, my physical stature and uh, gravity doesn't seem to work so well. I'm always concerned about being up high. If I fall, I die, um, and that makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> All right, Barry. Oh, my God! <laughs> As I accelerated along the line, I thought to myself, well, if the strap goes now, that's it. Thankfully, it didn't. Um, I just kept it together and, and just got across the other side. Ow! It's really wonderful to feel like you're suspended in air and going through the treetops. It's absolutely beautiful. It's such a great, invigorating sensation. Joe Chin coming in quick. Joe Chin. Oh! oh! Yes! Once I did it, oh, I loved it. Now I found a new hobby that I'd like to do. Whoa! <laughs> All right, so I hope everyone has had a good time so far in Honduras, but uh, it's time for us to buckle down and get to work. And Susan has the details. All right, guys, we're on our way to La Fortaleza de San Fernando, which was a fort built by the Spaniards on the Caribbean coast of Honduras. This place is steeped in history, directly relating to the Pirates of the Caribbean. Many battles were fought there between the Spaniards and the British pirates. Aside from all the battles, it's been a prison before, and a lot of people have died there. Now, our client, Aldo Zelaya, is an anthropologist, and he's very knowledgeable about our location. The thing that interests him the most, though, at this point, is the claims of paranormal phenomena that's going on. He wants to get to the bottom of this. This certainly sounds like a good case. Right, let's get in there and see what we got. Hey guys, hi. How are you? Welcome to the fortress. Good to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. I am an anthropologist to begin with. I called GHI to show me, to prove me, that there is some kind of activity going on here. The fortress was built in 1778 to protect the Spanish commodities that they were uh, bringing from the interior of the country, and they protected from the English pirates. In this place, this was the main entrance at the time, you know, when the Spanish occupied this place. And in this place happened a real pirate story. The pirates attacked through that door, led by the pirate named William Dort Rimple. And in the fortress, there were less than 100 soldiers, Spanish soldiers. And really was a big battle that lasted about 40 hours. 
So the pirates actually did make it into the courtyard and the battle was taking place right here? Yes, they battled here inside, you know, because they were hiding in different places. But finally, a few soldiers that they were alive, the Spanish soldiers, they managed to escape and they met in Guatemala with the rest of the soldiers. A few weeks later, they came back and they reattacked, you know, the pirates that were holding the, the fortress. The pirates held this place for five weeks. Then the Spanish took over after that time. What happened to the pirates after the Spanish reinvaded? Well, they managed to escape, most of them. Some were killed, you know, but they managed to escape. They took all the gold, silver, and other precious uh, metals. Well, guys, this is the church that functioned during the colonial period. In this bench was uh, an eye guard chief was uh, sitting here. I was ordered to stay overnight and guard a setup for an event the next day at the fortress. During the night, I decided to sit in the chapel to watch over the setup. Suddenly, five minutes after I sat down, the whole bench was picked up. It came down so hard it seemed to bounce. I was so afraid, I just ran out of the chapel. Well, this is the roof of the fortress. This place uh, is another place that took uh, paranormal events. It had to do mostly when the night chief guard were watching the prisoners at night. I was born here, and I have to tell you, every week the soldiers saw shadows, and they thought they were prisoners trying to escape. They called out, stop, stop, and since the shadows didn't stop moving, they fired. And when they counted the prisoners, they were all there. No one ever escaped. There are ghosts at the fortress. I will be very glad to find out really you could pick up something here. Hopefully, hopefully. I will take you a different place where other events took place, and then you could follow me, I will show okay. it to you. This is the powder room where the Spanish kept their powder. In this place also was used as a torture place. The torture was isolation by being here by himself. Once you close the gate, there were no sound and no light coming inside the place. And you can imagine what happened with somebody being put for several days in that yeah. situation. One of the guards here in this place were voices calling for him, trying to tell him something. Uh, from this place, you follow me. All right. Well, guys, this is the museum, and in the library, one night guard heard the benches and noises and tables moving inside. I was making my rounds. As I approached the library, I heard something being pulled, some sort of stuff. I, I don't know if it was a table or a chair, but it sounded like someone was pulling something. I looked inside, but there was nobody there. Since everything was in order, I decided to walk away as fast as I could. This is... Uh, a well here, this is a courtyard, and really strange event happens in this place here. When I was a boy, I brought the food to the guards and the inmates at the fortress. One day, as I was giving the inmates food, I saw someone coming towards us from the courtyard. I asked anyone if they knew him. No one did. I could see that he was an Indian, wearing native clothing. He looked very pale and his clothes were white. He walked towards us and then halfway he turned around, looking at us, but walking back toward the well. In the middle of the walk, he disappeared. The inmate jumped in his cell and ran to tell his friends. You doing your anthropological work here and us being able to come in and do a, our paranormal work here is a, a nice little meeting for us. In the way that you're searching for answers, we're going to do the same for you and uh, see what we can come up with. Appreciate You're welcome. Good luck. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Aldo is an anthropologist, so this is a man of science. He wants something he can see, he can hear, and he can pass on to the people who work here. And I think that we're in a unique position to accomplish that. They attempted to prevent the British entering, and uh, now, now I'm entering. So uh, let's see if that annoys some of the spirits and see if we can get some sort of response. This camera angle um, is to cover the area where the reports of the operations are said to run along the top of the wall. 
This camera angle is uh, pointed toward the front gates. Paul has been very kind to set up the laser grid. We shall see if anything should appear there. And this camera angle is pointing down into the courtyard where the operation of this native Honduran is said to appear. All right, well, let's get to work. Get those okay. lights out and get to it. All right. Here. Yeah, we gotta be careful. One of the things that's very interesting about investigating the gunpowder room is that this was also used as a solitary confinement area. So the fact that voices are alleged to be reaching out to others to attempt communication does actually make sense when you think about it. I have all three of them in shot perfectly. Perfect. Nice work. All right. This is Robbie D and Susan in the powder room. <laughs> We're also going to be using a slide projector this evening. By introducing images that they may be familiar with, we may be able to get a, a reaction on the equipment in the form of video or EVP. As we project the images, wait a few seconds, provide a question with the image, wait again, and we'll move on. Te hace falta el mundo terrenal? Si tú tienes un mensaje que desea dar, deja no saber. Estás enojado. Puedes hacer un ruido. I just heard something behind me. hacer un ruido I just heard something behind me I heard it I couldn't tell where it came from I said can you make a sound in Spanish I heard it and it came from right behind me I think that's what we call a direct response. Yeah, absolutely. Este aparato puede grabar tu voz. Everything in this room is incredibly still. Nothing was moving, even the air is stagnant, and I can't come up with an explanation for why something would move behind me. So now we need you to approach a little more, to come closer. I heard something again. What are you hearing? Just like, it sounds like small taps in the corner. There's some rocks over there. Um, did you hear that? Several times during the investigation, we heard anomalous sounds. One in particular sounded like footsteps on the cobblestone, which we know that we have reports of an individual walking around in that area. We're empty. There's nobody there. Sound like footsteps. Yeah, I heard that too. There definitely does seem from the early indications here to be some intelligence to what's going on here. We're putting up images eliciting responses, was what, which is what we're hoping for. We're asking for noises and receiving those noises in return. So it's definitely gonna be an interesting night. Okay, so we're headed towards the uh, museum. Yep. This is the place that they said something, uh, one of the guards was working here, and he thought he heard, like, scuffling of furniture being moved around. And... Yeah, he sounded like people were moving furniture in there or having a meeting. And then when they looked in, you could see that the chairs and tables haven't moved. And he freaked, because it sounded like chairs and desk movements. <laughs> and it scared him so much that he took off. Very strange. So... I got thermal. Cool. Is that pretty good? Sure. 
I'll leave that running and do an EVP session. All right, get down to business. Habla Ingles? Can you understand us? EVP stands for Electronic Voice Phenomenon. This is a situation in which we record ourselves asking questions and then go back and listen to the tape to see if any voices that we didn't hear at the time show up on the recording. Could you give us a sign that you can hear us or see us? Hello, is anyone there? Could you try to Talk as loud as you can. There's a device on this bench in front of me. That's just recording your voice to enable us to better communicate with you. Please give us a sign that you're here so we can tell our investigation to possibly help you and bring some closure to you. What was that? What was that? What was that? That came from straight That ahead. did. That like, moved. right here. Yeah, something moved. We both heard that one. Yes. Now, is, it, it sounded like... It sounded like a shuffling bench. Yeah. It did. It did. It did. It did. It did. If that was you, can you do that again for us, please? It sounded like dragging on the floor, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it did. Yep. What we heard is what the client seems to be hearing. Uh, they, they claim that they heard the furniture move. Uh, so we decided to look in the office to see if any other furniture was moving. Please let us know if you are here. If you're trying to communicate with us, you got our attention. That's You've me. got the attention of my friend Joe and myself. That's me. They hear furniture moving in yeah. here, so I figured I put the chair okay. in the middle of the room and memorize where it was and see if it moves. I think that's pretty good. Yes. Perfect. If that moves at all, that will um, be noticeable. And it will know that it had moved. Okay, cool. cool. All right, man. Awesome. Susan and I came to investigate the church where there's been a multitude of reports of paranormal activity. All right, let's play. People being physically thrown off his ben of benches, as well as strange voices being reported from within this area. Perfect night for ghost hunting. Yeah, definitely adds to the ambience. Yeah, that's ghost hunting weather. Got about one, two, three, four items measuring. Uh, EMF response in a variety of ways. An EMF detector is a tool that actually measures the electromagnetic field. If there's no natural causes for a fluctuation, then the possibility exists that it could be something paranormal. If the pirates are here, we need you to use the devices to communicate with us. Give us a sound from one of them. response on the PX09. Are you a Spanish soldier? Hablas inglés or español? What the hell was that? Is that from outside? You didn't hear that? What, what was it? It was like a... Otra vez, por favor. Un ruido más alto. Más, más alto. What is that bass hum? It's getting louder. Now it's fading. Did you, did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that one. That's it, was, it sounded like there was a subwoofer in the room with us, and they were turning it up, and then they turned it back down. Otra vez, por favor. The, the 
the tri-field's going off. Bennett. I'm getting chills a little bit. So am I. Otra vez, por favor. Rob first heard what sounded like a deep bass sound coming from the far end of the church. I noticed when that started happening, the atmosphere started getting a lot heavier. The, the tri-field's going off. Bennett. I'm getting chills a little bit. So am I. Benicky, come on. We can feel you here. Keep, keep on that. I want to see if there's a correlation between the sound and the EMF flux we're getting. Por favor, yo quiero ver. There we go. Oh, look at it's that spike. Off. That was up high. Well, we had the camera on that one. That was a spike and a half. You can make these sounds, you can make the meters go off. So you know we're here. You can see us. Let's see you. How about a flash of light? Is that too much to ask? It could be totally unrelated, but I, I don't like to not say something I'm experiencing. I'm getting chest pains. <gasps> I'm gonna keep the camera on you. I've never felt any sort of pain during an investigation and never from something that I couldn't see or touch or know what it was. It was a little spooky. It was something. Okay, so maybe we're starting to feel your presence. <laughs> That's an understatement. It was really strange to see that Rob was being affected physically. Obviously, whatever's here definitely has the ability to affect such, you know, a sturdy man. Haha, uh -huh, you didn't kill me. <laughs> We're just gonna have to go through the evidence to see if we picked up that strange, deep bass sound. All right. All right, let's go. The powder room, Joe, okay. where they kept the gunpowder for the cannons. Mm -hmm. Just mind your step. They also do solitary confinement. Not until I'm not here. There's been talks of whispers and things being heard and hear different voices that can't be understood. Barry and I were investigating the powder room. We had our mini TV. Barry had his audio piece running. I had uh, the thermal cam. Is there any of the native Honduran people still held within these walls? Could you please try to communicate? People say they hear your voices in here. Could you let us hear you? I keep hearing sounds moving there. Do you take a look outside and see if there's someone moving? Are you hungry? It sounds like someone walking out there. I need to find out what that, that sounds like footsteps. As we were investigating the uh, powder room, uh, we were hearing some sounds. And it sounded like it was coming from outside, so we immediately investigated. Let's take a look in here, just in case there's something trying to get our attention. If there are any entities here, please. Please come forward.
What is it you want? Why did you bring us here? Did you bring us in here to hide us from something? Is that the reason? Is there something we should hide from outside? Are you a parrot still in hiding? Are you guarding your treasure? That may be buried in here? Can you lead me to the treasure? still in hiding? Are you guarding your treasure that may be buried in you? Can you lead me to the treasure? Session. When we started to hear something heavy being dragged um, or thumped um, against the, the, the rear wall of the chamber. That was strange. That sounded like something was happening in the wall. Yeah, it sounded like something was either moving. But there's nothing here to move. No. Please make those sounds again. We've come along. There was another crash sound from outside, and it was very, very hard to try and understand where those sounds are coming from. Yeah, that's very, very strange, those noises. It's very strange. Okay, Joe, let's get to the well. Get some photographs. We're not actually sure if that's paranormal or not. We'll have to wait and see what evidence reviews. What made those sounds remains a mystery. Full spectrum camera allows us to see into the three very prominent light spectrums, infrared, visible and ultraviolet. My research has shown me that a lot of the activity that we'll be looking for will be in the ultraviolet spectrum. We have taken them out all shots. Ooh, that's very bright, but perfect. We want to get a look at those uh, during analysis to see what has come out. Up here. Definitely wanted to get in here because of all the activity reported, this seems to be the most recent and most consistent. Oh, this is cool. Scott and I headed back to the church to follow up on the earlier activity that Susan and I had experienced there. One of the biggest claims here at the entire fortress is the guard being thrown off the edge of the bench. It was one incident of the bench lifting and it was only that bench? Just this one. And one time. I'm probably pushing about 235, 240. There's no way. I mean, I don't care how big this guy is. Mm -mm. If indeed a spirit was able to do that, there's something very strong going on here. This thing is not moving. Yeah, the thing's heavy. So what I think we need to do is, because we don't know exactly what we could inspect in here, is just put a wide range of equipment out and see what we got. Cool, man. Can you set up a tri -feel? Yeah, absolutely. And then the other thing we're gonna add tonight is the EFP. The recorder just hooks to that? Mm -hmm. The EFP is a new device that we're working with here. It stands for EVP Field Processor. And if we get this anomalous spike, something came in and got recorded. Okay, so if we stay real quiet. Oh, that's badass. We'd like to communicate with one of the individuals who was kept here. We know that the British privateers, pirates, as they may have called you, you would 
have spent time here, correct? Oh, come on. The man who would throw that guard out of that chair, that man isn't going to be scared to come forward and talk to us. Bob, you're from New York, right? Mm hmm We got to get this thing fired up. If it's pulling people off benches and lifting benches, I want to see that. This is open a can of New York whip ass on this. Show us a sign that you are here. I'm tired of playing with you. It's starting to piss me off. Listen, if Scott's bothering you, he can back off. Is Scott upsetting you? If one of our pirate friends indeed is here, but I... That was pretty coincidental, if anything. That was pretty badass. Okay. Let's recreate that. Hold on. You got his attention. Scott and I came to investigate the church where we noticed some unusual responses coming from one of the EMF meters. If one of our pirate friends indeed is here, what I would... That was pretty bad. Okay. Let's recreate that. Hold on. You got his attention. You here? You gonna play games now? That's good, I like games. See, I've got an advantage. You disagree? <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. That's crazy. Scott and I came um, hoping that potentially we could interact with a spirit that might be present. Uh, the interaction we received wasn't quite what we expected. I've got bad news for you. The English don't control this fortress anymore. And the good thing is, what, you're gonna come up on this side of me? Come on. Walk your ass over here. Stand right next to me. Hopefully we got an EVP response, but we definitely received some documentation. So we're now going to need to go over the multitude of video recordings and audio recordings to see if there's something that's possibly paranormal. Okay, this is Paul and Barry. We're on the rooftop of the San Fernando Fortress. Paul and I came up onto the roof of San Fernando Fortress to conduct an EVP session. Come and see Amos. If there was an entity responsible for walking along the wall, can we please ask that you come forward and do the same again? Necessita ayuda. We won't ask a question to any of the spirits that may be here. Were you here when the pirates invaded? Where is this here? Do you understand modern English? Do you understand my crappy Spanish? Are you the one responsible for running along the roof? This device, can you speak into the device and cause those lights to flash? I go to a fellow Englishman. How about a spot of tea? Scones? It seemed to respond favorably to the suggestion that maybe it was an Englishman or, or, or a parrot. Could you handle a jar of rum just about now? What was that? I did hear what sounded like a bootstep. Can you please come forward? 
When it comes to audio, that's something I'm going to be listening out for. That lightning is on top of the us. The entire mountain range just lit yeah. up there. Dear God. <laughs> Are we tempting fate or what? Let's get out of here before we're killed. OK, everyone, it's about that time. Let's get back to Central Command and break it down. investigation was incredible. The experiences were there. The evidence, I think, is going to be there. And I think that the answers for the questions they're looking for, we're going to deliver. The team came together tonight and really did a really, really thorough job. I happen to hear of a uh, bench being moved, feelings of oppression, um, a lot of responses to certain devices. Um, so hopefully this will actually reflect in the analysis and uh, we'll be able to present some sort of evidence to work on into the analysis now of San Fernando Fort. The British parrots attacked this location. They took it for several weeks. And then, of course, then we have the Honduran government using this location as a prison. Is there something left behind? We don't know. But going into this, we're really going to go over our stuff with a fine tooth comb and discover if the fort is truly haunted. Okay, um, I have something to share with you guys. This is Rob and myself in the powder room, and I believe I captured what sounds like a male voice. Um, it starts right before Rob starts to speak mm -hmm. and continues on just a like, little bit after. So I guess something was speaking as Rob was speaking. Right. But you capture a good amount of it before mm -hmm. he starts talking. Mm -hmm. You wanna take a listen sure. to it? Yeah, I can hear that. Um, and it's frustrating whenever they do start to communicate. Of course, we don't hear it at the time, so we start speaking as well. When I listen to it, I think the voice is saying mujer, which means girl or woman. Oh. So, and it sounds like a male voice, and I was the only female in the room at the time. Were you talking at all? Were you trying to I, um, I was speaking in Spanish, of, really? yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, how does that make you feel, knowing that you were the only woman in that cell? I went in there trying to communicate with something, and obviously I captured the attention of something in there who wanted to respond back to me. So that's awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good work. Good work. Let's push ahead, and hopefully something else is going to turn up. Hey, Scott. What's up? I believe we captured a response to Rob when he asked Hablas Espanol in the church. And I want you to take a listen to it and tell me what you hear. Habla Espanol. That's cool. What do you hear? It says no. That's what it sounds like. There's definitely something going on there. It was interesting. Well, let's get on with it. Right. Let's see what else turns up. Hey, guys. So this is Rob and myself, and we're investigating the powder room. And I'm asking for a sound, and I get it. Um, I didn't think I would capture it on the audio, because we heard this at the time. but. It definitely shows up. You want to take a listen? Mm -hmm. That's cool. Nice. Wow. I'm not sure what it is. Guys, welcome again 
you found something interesting for me here. We have some, some things I think are definitely going to answer some questions for you and possibly raise some new ones. Okay. First of all, I wanted to bring your attention to one incident that occurred in the chapel of the fort. Yeah, I was in there investigating with Susan, and there was a number of strange occurrences. Um, for one, we were getting what sounded like a low bass response. Mm. Yeah, and it was kind of rising and then dropping to the point that we would ask for it to happen and it would happen mm. and this was being accompanied now, I've never said this before on investigation I can't say if this was a ghost doing this to me but I was getting chest pains mm. um, Susan was saying she was feeling very uncomfortable those are the kind of things that are personal experiences. Now, in, in that area, um, we were using uh, a specialized piece of equipment, uh, an okay. electromagnetic uh, sensor, okay. which, which allows us to, to monitor different frequencies of the oh, electromagnetic okay. fields okay. to see if there's any disturbance going on. And certainly that seemed to be happening in that area. All right, okay, let's see it. That needle was moving. Mm -hmm. Wow. Interesting, really, guys. Uh, you have something else, uh, you Absolutely. Okay. We, we certainly do. Joe and Scott were investigating in the museum, and one of the claims was to hear furniture moving. Okay. Now, as they were conducting an EVP session, um, they heard in the distance what sounded like one of the chairs in the main courtyard area being moved. Wow. Now, they captured that movement. Have a listen. Please give us a sign that you're here, so we can tell our investigation to possibly help you and bring some closure to you. Wow. Kind of interesting, really. I'm really happy. This next uh, piece of audio that we want to play for you comes from myself and Scott, again, investigating in the church. Okay. Now, we're asking a direct question of anyone that might be present. There seems to be a, a definitive answer. Definitely, there is something there. It sounds like a no. Now imagine our surprise. We say habla espanol and the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> little strange, definitely a little strange. We could relate that to the pirates that so they that's hold what we're the fortress for, for weeks. You know, maybe yeah. some of them die in that place. And maybe that could be related to that, you know. Yeah. Susan and I were investigating in the gunpowder room. Susan asks, can you make a noise? Okay, let's hear that. What was that? It was very close to Susan. What she described as is someone like scattering a handful of pebbles over in her direction. Wow. And so to, to you know show the image and ask, can you respond? Can you now interact with us? And receive that sound was pretty pretty impressive. Very, very, very impressive, yes. I'm amazed to hear that stuff here, really. Given the evidence that we're able to recover in the circumstances of the investigation, there definitely seems to be something paranormal going on here, beyond the norm. Um, given these snippets of voice and strange goings on, there doesn't seem to be anything, you know, that's threatening or hurting visitors. So I think that should, certainly people should be welcome to, to come here. And I am kind of impressed. And I do really appreciate, you know, your help. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very Thank welcome. You. It's been terrific. Glad to meet you. Thank you very much. I am an anthropologist, so we don't believe in paranormal activities, but because you show me some hardcore evidence, I have to think now, you know, interesting. He'd heard all the stories, he wanted us to come in and say, here's the recordings, here's the video, here's the audio. Prove to me that there's no rational explanation, or if there is, provide one. Mm -hmm. Letting him hear some of the noises that, that were recorded, both in the chapel and the museum, and it matched the reports that he was given to us. I think he was really taken by that. It was nice to have Joe and Scott come in, help the team yep. out again, as they always do. And uh, Susan, taking over for Brandy as case manager, worked mm -hmm. too. Job well done. Yep. Keep it moving.